Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC Point Set Topology Part 2. Today we will start studying manifolds with boundary. Last time we studied what are called as manifolds, right? So this manifold with boundary, they are also going to manifolds. Actually, we are going to extend the definition of manifolds to a larger class of topological spaces. So I will touch upon this uh, usage of this uh, terminology a little later. The first thing is that we are already familiar with the word boundary in a different context. Namely, we employed this whenever you have a topological space and a subset of that, the boundary of the subset A is defined as the closure of A minus the interior of A. This nomenclature for the boundary is totally dependent on the larger topological space X wherein the subset A is sitting inside. Now the term boundary will be used in a much uh, you know subtler way in a technical sense okay and it is going to be an invariant of the homeomorphism type and it does not depend upon where the manifold is sitting inside okay so having said that much let us come to brass tacks here the important thing here is even to make this definition we need the full force of Brouwer's invariance of domain namely you remember this one not the weaker form but the stronger form namely if you have two non-empty open subsets of Rn which are abstractly as topological spaces namely take the subspace topology from Rn suppose they are homeomorphic to each other if one of them is open then the other one is also open this is a completely non-trivial statement a profound statement and this is what we will need we have used only a you know weaker version here namely rn and rm cannot be homeomorphic if m is not equal to n that is an easy consequence of this one okay so now we will need the full force of this I will come to that again why we need it. So first of all our model for uh, manifold itself is change now. Earlier the model was Rn or equivalently the open disk inside Rn, right? the unit disk inside Rn because both those two are homeomorphic to each other. Now we are taking the half space Hn namely the subspace of Rn such that the last coordinate of the points is bigger than or equal to 0. You can take any other coordinate, this is convenient one. Only the last coordinate is bigger than or equal to 0. So this is like the ray, half ray from 0 to infinity, half line, 0 to infinity open. Okay, when n equal to 1, this will be precisely 0 to infinity, 0 closed, infinity open. So we are allowing that boundary point 0, the boundary in the older sense, namely this point bound 0 will be a boundary point of the closure uh, uh, 0 to infinity inside R. Okay, that is the starting point, that is, the, that is our uh, model now. So in Hn for example, all points wherein the last coordinate is 0, that is subspace of that, that is going to be the boundary of this Hn inside Rn. But 
once we have taken this one we will you can just forget about rn and use this model hn to define our manifolds so let us see how let a, let us start with the topological space x we will call it a manifold with boundary so i am not defining manifold i am not defining boundary okay i am not defining in the word with here but i am defining manifold with boundary this entire phrase as one single technical phrase so a manifold with boundary if it is second countable hausdorff and the local euclidean part is modified here now for each point x inside x okay we have a neighborhood ux and a homeomorphism phi from ux to hn now you can take this as the whole of hn also no problem on to an open subset of hn that is more convenient that's all we know that just like ux to rn i could have taken in the case of ordinary manifolds right or ux to open subset of rn or ux to just the, the open disk b bn all that though all that those three things were equivalent here also in the homeomorphism could be ux to the whole of rn or some open subset okay this open subset allows us little more freedom terms such as charts coordinate function coordinate neighborhood atlas etc which we have defined in the definition 12.1 of manifolds remember that in the context of manifolds they all make sense exactly similarly except that now the coordinate functions phi of ux it is not necessarily an open subset of rn but it is actually an open subset of hn this is something funny here in fact every open subset of rn has a copy an open subset of inside hn but not the vice versa so rn itself is homeomorphic to the strict open uh, you know, upper half upper half space here namely take all point so the last coordinate is strictly bigger than 0 right so if you have an open subset of rn that will be homeomorphic to some open subsets of hn strictly contained inside the interior of hn all right so this half space has more open sets than the full space anyway so we can have this extra open subsets here of hn which may meet the boundary which may meet the La, uh, the plane r n minus one cross zero. That is the extra thing here. That for this is clearly a generalization of the old definition manifold. Okay. Let us denote by interior of X the set of all points X having a neighborhood U X homeomorphic to an open subset. of interior of hn itself you see there are two parts one may be just hn but this is a stricter condition interior of h homeomorphic to interior of hn okay namely all xn the nth coordinate bigger than 0 so take such points then they will form automatically a manifold emily topological manifold in the old sense right so why the interior is non empty as soon as x is non empty that is also clear because as soon as x is non empty there is some open subset which is homeomorphic to a non empty open subset of hn okay if you delete the boundary part here that will be an open subset in the interior of hn which is obviously non empty so everything you have to see inside hn then you get this one okay the complement of interior of x in x is denoted by boundary of x so this is a notation now i will read it as boundary of x 
and is called the boundary of x. So, we had used this notation earlier for boundary of A, where A is a subset of x. If x is the topological space in which boundary of x is taken, then this is empty. So, this has no other meaning there, right? Because the closure is whole of x, interior is whole of x. So, boundary of a boundary of the whole space inside itself is empty. Alright. So, here that is not the case. X is the space, it is not contained in anything. Okay. This is a topological space on its own. Now, boundary of x consists of those points which are not in the interior of x. So, interior of x also has a different meaning here. Okay. So, this is in the general topological case interior of x inside x would be whole of x that is not the case here. Here also it can happen that, but then x will be a pure manifold not manifold with boundary. Okay. So, I am talking about this one. It may happen that boundary is empty just like in the case of manifolds. Okay, which means that x is precisely manifold. This, this is if and only. The points of boundary of x are characterized by the following property. So, this is where you have to be, you know, you have to use the, the Brouwer's fixed point, Brouwer's uh, invariance of domain. Namely, there is a neighborhood ux of x in x such that we have a homeomorphism phi from ux to hn on to an open subset Vx of Hn such that the nth coordinate of this point, nth coordinate of Vx, this itself vanishes. So, the Rn minus 1 cross 0 should be hit by this phi. Okay. Take such a point such that Vx is inside the Rn minus 1 cross 0. Okay. So, those are the boundary points. Now, what do you mean by characterized? Let me tell you that. Okay, so this is where I have to use the Brouwer's invariance of domain. So let us see. Start with such a point. Now suppose there is another neighborhood U x prime and another homeomorphism psi from U prime x to H n. Similar to that one on to an open subset V x prime of H n such that the nth coordinate V x is now positive. Either it is positive or it is 0, right? It is greater than or equal to 0 always. So, now e can this happen? The question is the moment one this thing happens, this other thing cannot happen. That is the conclusion. That is why this is a characterization. So, let us see why this, this cannot happen. Once you have another psi like this, you can restrict, you know, the, this psi to u x prime to a smaller neighborhood. We may assume that psi, the nth coordinate of this psi x, psi x of whatever this one is positive for all y inside this smaller subset by continuity of psi. If once it is positive in a smaller neighborhood, it will be positive for all the points in that neighborhood that is all I am using and this u x prime is contained inside u x. This will imply that v x prime is an open subset of h n interior of h n now the smaller set and hence any subset of open subset of interior of h n is open inside r n because interior of h n is open inside r n. Now, consider f equal to phi composite psi inverse from this open subset they are all inside our uh, V x prime is inside where it is inside uh, uh, x right inside x. So, psi inverse of phi come back to f 2 this one. So, now what you get is this is inside h n which is a homeomorphism, but by by uh, Brouwer's invariance of domain it follows that f of V x prime remember V x prime and f of this one these are both subsets of now R n. This part is in H n, this part is strictly inside uh, interior of H n. Okay. So, f of v x prime must be also open subset. right? 
and is contained inside uh, hn but this contains a point fx which has its nth coordinate 0 so that is absurd because an open subset of of rn contained inside hn cannot have a boundary point there in rn minus 1 the moment rn minus 1 he hit if you take any open disk around that point it will flow out there will be nth coordinate will be negative also for some points so it will grow out of uh, hn right so that is absurd okay so that is not possible so the conclusion is that the definition of boundary of x as well as interior of x is now well defined thanks to Brouwer's invariance of domain. It follows that u hat, which is just a notation, take phi inverse of r n minus one cross zero. Okay, so this may be empty, but right now I am assuming that the singleton x is already there. So u hat will be a neighborhood of x. This is now you know homeomorphic to some open subset here because phi inverse r n minus 1 cross 0 intersection with whatever neighborhood we have that will be an open subset of r n minus 1 cross 0. So, I am taking phi inverse of that is a neighborhood of x inside boundary of x because all these points in u hat are coming here in the r n minus 1 cross 0. So, they are qualified to be inside boundary of x. Okay. So, what I am talking starting with a phi like this okay, u x and phi where x has gone to a point inside r n minus 1 cross 0 the point phi n of x is 0. So, with that you take phi u hat equal to phi inverse that will be a neighborhood of x inside boundary of x and homeomorphic to by uh, the same phi will give you homeomorphic to an open subset of r n which just means that the boundary of x itself is a manifold pure manifold in the older definition okay, of dimension 1 less namely n minus 1. Okay, this is if it, if it is non empty that is all otherwise of course empty is allowed okay. and this boundary of x itself will not have any boundary because now it is a pure manifold this is, this is not a half space now here it is r n minus 1. Okay. An easy consequence of this observation is that boundary of a manifold with boundary is a topological invariant. What is the meaning of that? If you have a homeomorphism f from x to y, x is a manifold with boundary, then y will be a manifold with boundary and f of the boundary of x will be equal to boundary of y. You think about it, this is not difficult at all. Okay. So, boundary always is mapped on to boundary of y by the homeomorphism. So, restricted boundary of x, it should be homeomorphism. Okay. Now, I come to again this nomenclature about uh, manifolds somewhat apologetically. Strictly speaking, our first definition of manifold should have been manifold without boundary, right? And the second one here should have been named manifold with or without boundary. The only problem is right from the beginning before defining the manifold, I have to define what is the with boundary and without boundary. So, one does not like that one. The second point is there is a standard convention of using the smallest words to represent the most commonly used concepts. So, we will be studying manifolds and quite often without boundary. So, that should be just called as small as. So, we have called that one as manifolds. Okay. So, that is all uh, uh, explanation for why we are making this one. In any case, if there is an initial confusion of about this uh, 
what is a manifold what is a manifold with boundary what is a manifold without boundary having spent uh, sufficiently enough time now explanation i hope this confusion if at all has disappeared now okay let us have some examples any closed disk in rn is a manifold with the boundary so we have to we have to prove that one huh? since any two of them are homeomorphic to each other it suffices to show that the standard unit disk dn inside rn is an n manifold with boundary in fact boundary itself will be the n minus 1 dimensional sphere all x such that norm x equal to 1 okay we will prove that let us look at first the case n equal to 1 then this closed disk is nothing but minus 1 to plus 1 the interval right you can write it as minus 1 to 1 open union minus 1 open comma 1 okay i have written it as two open subsets of this closed interval each of them is clearly homeomorphic to zero to infinity zero closed infinity open and that is h1 so i have given a at last there are two charts here okay so i have given an at last over in the general case what i will do instead of you know subtracting this one and adding this one and so on there are two of them i will do this one dn minus the top point the north pole whatever 0001 and dn minus the bottom part 000 minus 1 so this is similar to that but in n dimensional version okay and we claim that these two open subsets of dn are homeomorphic to the entire of hn just like this one okay carbon copy of that one n dimensional version that's all so let us denote shorter notation n equal to 0 0 and this point will become minus n let us consider one of them u equal to dn minus this capital n okay this one the other one is homeomorphic to this one by just taking the nth coordinate uh, uh, x going to all other coordinates same nth coordinate was as a reflection right so it is enough to show that this is homeomorphic to hn all right so we have a ready made map here actually only thing is we have to see how to use it all right so first what i do i will identify this disk dn with a subspace of rn plus 1 indeed a subspace of sn itself see sn is sitting rn plus 1 this is inside rn so i need one more coordinate i will put it in the first one here or the zeroth coordinate the rest of the coordinates are exactly as x1 x2 xn okay the, the zeroth coordinate is 1 minus summation xi square and take the square root why i have done this if you take now squares of v all these that will be equal to 1 so i will be inside the unit sphere here in sn plus in rn plus 1 okay that's all clearly this is a continuous map it is actually the graph of this function okay this function x1 x2 x1 going to that you take this f is just there like x comma this one so it's like a graph okay so you can rewrite it as y1 y2 yn plus 1 put fn okay equal to 0 001 okay that is n prime that is n prime is a notation f of capital n is nothing but 0001 the i don't i am not defining this part this n prime is just another notation it follows that f defines a homeomorphism of dn minus n the whole thing is 
define the whole of if you throw away that it will be a subset of b minus n prime where b is set of all y is in s n the first coordinate y1 this part is greater than or equal to 0 now this is a positive square so this is not the full s n it is only half the sphere right given by the first coordinate greater than or equal to 0 so this is the preparation i have made now now what i do i take the stereographic projection stereographic projection is defined from sn minus this n prime the north pole to the entire of rn so that is a homeomorphism we have studied this one carefully restrict it to the half disk it will go into the half disk h here half space h here namely y1 y2 y1 plus 1 okay inside rn plus 1 the y1 coordinate is always greater than equal to 0 but the last coordinate y n plus 1 is 0 because it is stereographic projection. So, this is clearly homeomorphic to h n. The only thing is instead of last coordinate y n greater than equal to 0, I put y 1 greater than equal to 0. So, you have to interchange those two coordinates. So, look at these methods. I mean, these are important methods in inside, just inside, you know, handling various subsets of Rn, that is all. So, more generally, any convex polyhedron in Rn being homeomorphic to Dn is an n-manifold with boundary. Details are left to you as an exercise. Why I do not want to get into what is the definition of convex polyhedron and so on. If you do not know, you will have, have to learn it somewhere else, that is all. That is not uh, central to the theme of this course. Note that the manifold boundary of Dn and its topological boundary as a subset of Rn coincide, namely they are the unit sphere, right, in both the cases. Indeed, this explains why the term boundary is used in general topology. You know, the classically, these manifolds were defined and studied, even without definition perhaps, even before the point set topology was conceived. Forget about the boundary of a subset and so on. So, the boundary of a subset, the, that concept is a copy from examples like this. Okay. Unfortunately, we are learning it the other way around. For the same reason, as for manifolds without boundary, manifolds with boundary are also metrizable and hence paracompact. Why? Because we have assumed second countable, Hausdorff, and whether they are inside, you know, homeomorphic to open subsets of Rn or HM, they will be locally compact. Okay. So, they are T3 second counter T3 space, those are metrizable. We shall often use the word manifold to mean manifold without boundary, the old definition. Okay. So, that is why this the short, short term manifold. Often the results that we state for them are valid for manifolds without boundary as well, though we cannot take them for granted. There are some results which are not true at all and if they are true, you have to prove them separately. Sometimes it requires quite a lot of uh, effort as compared to manifolds without boundary. Okay. Whenever things are not true at all, we will try to mention them separately. Okay. So, here is an easy consequence of existence of partition of unity because they are, we have shown that they are Hausdorff and uh, paracompact. Okay. We shall now obtain 
the so called caller neighborhood theorem which is a very useful result on its own so that is an important result about manifolds with boundary let me make a definition first that x be a manifold boundary of a non empty now okay otherwise the rest of the definition is vacuously true it doesn't hold at all so we start with the manifold with boundary non empty by a caller neighborhood or simply you can say just a caller of boundary of x inside x we mean an open set u okay open subset of x okay with a homeomorphism p from u to the boundary of x product with zero infinity this is a topological product now. boundary x is subset subspace of x okay you must have a homeomorphism with one extra property namely for all x on the boundary p of x should go to x comma 0 okay there are bound u is a neighborhood of boundary of x so boundary of x is sitting inside here right so for those points p of that must be just x comma 0 so such a open subset open neighborhood with the homeomorphism will be called a caller neighborhood now there is nothing special about the choice of this this half open interval 0 to infinity you could have taken 0 to epsilon because we know 0 epsilon is also homeomorphic to 0 infinity that is all indeed once u is a caller neighborhood as above you look at these subspaces namely phi inverse of boundary of x cross 0 to r take the inverse image that will be another open subset which will contain boundary of x and it will be again homeomorphic to boundary of x cross 0 r obviously which you can you know you can compose with another homeomorphism make it 0 infinity to satisfy this definition for hn the entire hn itself is a caller for boundary of hn obviously hn is a manifold with boundary right so what happens in the case of hn its boundary you know has a neighborhood which is the whole of hn that hn is homeomorphic to rn minus 1 cross 0 mainly boundary of hn cross 0 uh, 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 cross uh, rn minus 1 okay so this is the neighborhood the whole h n is a neighborhood of this one similarly if you take the the d n minus a concentric ball ball is center r center 0 and radius r r smaller than 1 of course ok take a ball of radius r closed ball subtract it that is a caller neighborhood for boundary of dn that is namely the sphere sn minus 1 ok for an interval a to b ok closed interval a to b a to t union s to b is a caller neighborhood of boundary of a b what is boundary of a b where a b is an interval closed interval little a comma little b right just the two elements okay that has a neighborhood like this a to t comma s to b where t and s are like this namely a less than t less than s less than b so that is the example now here is the final theorem so pay attention let x be a manifold with non empty boundary and w contained in that x be a proper open subset in x such that boundary of w is contained inside w i don't want uh, this w to be the whole of x okay then there exists 
a caller neighborhood view of boundary of x such that this u is contained in u bar contained inside w and the complement x minus u is homeomorphic to x again so throw away the caller neighborhood whatever left out is again homeomorphic to the manifold itself okay the caller is always like boundary cross an interval right so you you remove the open half open interval so that will be again homeomorphic to x that is the that is the meaning of this one here and such neighborhoods can be chosen as small as you please inside an open set this w itself is a neighborhood okay then you can take u inside that so say u bar is inside w all right so the proof is slightly longer but not difficult if you understand what is going on the two examples the three examples etc whatever i have given they are the guiding principles here let's stop look at what happens in the case of 0 to say 1 okay open so 0 is the interval 0 uh, is the boundary it has a neighborhood no matter how small you take 0 to some epsilon which is homeomorphic to 0 to infinity if you remove 0 to epsilon whatever is left is again a closed interval proper closed interval not a singleton so it will be again homeomorphic to the whole of 0 1 right okay similar to that that is what is happening but we have to work a little harder here we need to use partition of unity also because we are not assuming compactness if you assume compactness you can probably write down a much shorter proof over to you after after you learn this proof that will be left as an exercise to okay so the idea here is a very very beautiful idea here what we do is okay we attach an external collar to x i am going to explain what is the meaning of this one namely you know you are taking a larger space you are creating a space larger space containing x okay so the rest of the extra space is boundary of x cross in interval minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 0 so that is what i am doing so i am taking y as the quotient of disjoint union of x and boundary of x cross minus 1 0 if you take disjoint union that is not not much uh, fun what i do i identify boundary of x cross 0 this copy with the boundary of x here okay by identify x comma x belong to here with x comma 0 here okay the rest of them is floating outside okay yes. observe that y is also an n manifold which is boundary homeomorphic to boundary of x cross minus 1 this time so this portion becomes the boundary now the point the all the points x comma 0 they have become interior points right the idea is to define a homeomorphism f from x to y which is identity outside this w prime and then take u equal to f inverse of boundary of x cross minus 1 to 0 clearly then u bar will be contained inside w and x from here to here is a homeomorphism okay so what is this w prime i will explain this is a small subspace of w chosen right in the beginning like this you can choose an open subset w prime such that boundary of x is contained inside w prime contained inside the closure contained inside w so here i am just using regularity and this one is a closed subset 
closed subset contained in open subset in between you can introduce this another open subset right so now we begin with a countable partition of unity theta i how do you get countability because the whole space is second countable why where i am working on i am working on boundary of x which is the manifold so that for each i the support of theta i is compact so this is one of the uh, remark which we made because because of the local compactness okay you can assume that the support of theta i are compact okay and is contained in a coordinate open subset ui the coordinate subset can be assumed to be such that they are closures are relatively compact closures are compact right and if this is uh, this support of theta is contained inside this one it will be automatically being a closed subset it will be compact also okay so so how do i do that start with a coordinate cover namely at last go to a locally finite uh, cover because of para compactness after that go to a countable finite countable uh, cover because of second countability use the partition of unity which exists because of para compactness automatically you, you will get these ones are compact okay so these are coordinate uh, neighborhood so i have vi from ui cross 0 1 to vi so these are coordinate neighborhoods for uh, for points in the boundary of x okay now i am going inside the manifold x itself by using that these are all neighborhoods of this whole thing is a neighborhood of uh, this w prime is a neighborhood of boundary of x and ui are compact ui bars are compact so i can extend this neighbor to 0,1 right vi from ui cross 0 comes some so this is the first thing here because of the compactness you can extend it to a small neighborhood 0 to 1 to vi is valley's theorem okay homeomorphism vi to some rn is there now uh, rn minus 1 is there now you can take an open subset in rn okay on open subset vi these vi are inside w prime of x everything is working inside of it, such that the Vi cross zero zero coordinate x comma zero is x inside Vi prime for all x. So these Uis Vi is I am actually writing as a parameterization. They are you know parameterizations for points inside the boundary, but the parameterizations occurring for neighborhoods inside x itself. Okay, so you choose such homeomorphisms. There is no problem. now comes the construction so this is all preparation how to choose these things etc now put eta not equal to 0 i am going to do some uh, what's it inductive construction so starting point you no know, i don't do anything eta not equal to 0 eta k is the sum of theta i up to k i range to 1 to k remember these are just non negative real valued functions so you can just sum it sum it up finite sum i have taken and for k greater than good one that is the definition next put this zk is a space x comma t such that x is inside uk so u and u to uk are open subsets of boundary of x x is inside uk the t varies between Minus of eta k minus one to one. After all, all these eta k's are taking values between zero and one. Okay, so I take minus of this less than equal to t less than equal to one up to there. I have. So this is the interval strictly contained inside minus one to plus one. This part is plus one on the positive side. The negative side, how much you can go at the most minus one. okay so these are subspaces of now uk cross 
minus 1 to plus 1 ok, but much smaller. So, x must be only here. Now, z k prime is all x t such that the same thing, but use eta k here eta instead of eta k plus 1. So, since eta k is slightly you know bigger because one more function is has been added here, this will be slightly larger interval than this one only on u k. So, these are defined only on u k. All right. Now, take alpha k from z k to z k prime be the homeomorphism which linearly stretches the segment singleton x cross this interval to this interval. Linearly stretches means what 1 goes to 1 eta k minus 1 x goes to e minus eta k of x. You know we have uh, linear uh, homeomorphism mapping any interval a b to a prime b prime right. So, take those homeomorphisms for each x you do that automatically because you can write down the formula in terms of eta k minus 1 and eta k here. So, it will be automatically a homeomorphism on the whole space ok. So, put y k see again I am defining these things inductively right put y k equal to x union this x comma t where eta k is taken up to 0 only ok. So, portion of z k is taken z k prime z k prime is taken only up to t less than equal to 0 ok that is your y k namely these are extra spaces you see that is what I have taken ok, but take it with union with x ok. So, they are all subspaces of y now let beta k from z k prime to y k be the embedding by given by beta k of x t is phi k of x t where t is positive remember this phi is u i cross 0 1. So, the second coordinate is here non negative. So, that is what you have to do. So, non negative you take phi k when it is negative from 0 minus 1 to 0 you take it as x t itself ok identity map itself. So, that makes sense because they are all subspace we are working inside y now. So, it will go in inside y k because this beta k is defined only up to minus eta k. For t negative no, no, not ne, less than equal to 0 you define this when a t equal to 0 the, the two definitions coincide ok. So, we have got these embeddings of z k prime inside y k. We define g k on the image of beta k intersection with y k minus 1 to y k by the formula g k of beta k of x t could beta k composite alpha k this alpha k is stretching k the smaller space to larger space ok. So, first stretch it and then take beta k every member here is this is the image. So, it is beta k of x t ok. So, take that x t stretch it and then again take beta k. So, it is like first you take beta k inverse instead of writing inverse I have just written g k of every element here is after all unique element like this beta k of x t ok. If you write it as some y then this will be this x t will be beta k inverse of that. So, that is more confusing than writing. So, this write like this. So, g k is defined like this ok if x is not in the support of theta k then eta k will be 0 right. So, if eta k is 0 what is this summation it will be eta k minus 1. So, that point will be inside z k not in z k prime it will be here though I put this one ok for points wherein x is not in the support of this uh, theta k eta k is eta k minus 1. Therefore, 
alpha k of x t will be just x t. Therefore, g k of beta k of x t will be beta k of x t throughout. Outside, for negative things, it is just x t. All both of them are x t. But now, now because of this one, g k of beta k of x t will be just beta k of x t because this is identity. So the stretchings are. Extending one from the next one, that is important. Okay, now we define f k from y k minus one to y k. See, on subspaces, this beta k is we have defined. Okay, now for the whole full y k to be g k on image of beta k and identity outside image of beta k. Okay, so this is very important here now because these things are just stretching things, right? So on the this on whenever it is minus it is equal to plus one, it is identity already there. Okay, so on the plus one it is identity. So also when theta k is zero for for points which are outside the support. these two are the same also right so, <laughs> so therefore what happens is that is an important point the point is that once you are outside this uh, image of beta k okay on the on the boundary of beta k itself which is zero therefore on the outside of this one so you can just define it as identity so extend it identity k then it will follow that f k is continuous indeed since each alpha k is a homeomorphism it easily follows that f k is also a homeomorphism finally there are infinitely many of them i am putting f equal to the compositions of these fi's in that correct order okay the reverse order so what is the meaning of this how do you explain that look at any point okay f1 is defined f2 is defined f3 is defined after a certain stage it will become identity why because this fk once the point is outside the theta k outside the support of theta k this fk will be just identity so you are taking only the composition up to here stretching 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 along the these uh, uh, intervals vertical intervals x will be fixed x comma t goes to x comma t prime that is the kind of homeomorphism we have here okay so this makes sense because at each point only finitely many functions are are not identity after that it's identity so this is like infinite product when you take uh, most of them equal to 1 infinite product of elements i mean real numbers that similar to that okay so note that the complement on the complement of v which is phi i union phi i of ui cross 0 1 take the union and uh, therefore outside w prime f is identity on v itself f makes sense since any point x belongs to boundary of x there are only finitely many i for which x belongs to ui and this is like local coordinate locally finiteness and so on okay and f fk of x t is equal to x t if x is not in uk x is not in in the support of theta k then already this fk is identity but these things may be so they are all inside once is beyond uk there is all the theta k's are so theta and theta theta t are all uh, zero that's the whole idea indeed in a neighborhood of x all fk are identity except those k for which theta k is not zero right so that is the whole idea so for this reason the map f is also proper map proper map 
why it is outside you take any point here there will be neighborhood which is a compact neighborhood and outside that it will be identity so it goes on like that okay so only if at each uh, you have to take some compact neighborhood of boundary of x okay then the rest of them you know this points for you can use this formula it will be identity so the changes are occurring only inside a compact neighborhood for each compact subset you will get a compact subset of for each compact subset of uh, of boundary of k you will get a compact neighborhood something uh, 0 1 minus 1 to plus 1 inside that everything is working here outside that it will be identity okay so for this reason fp is a proper mapping summation theta k is 1 it follows that f will be surjective summation theta k is 1 if you have anything less than 1 it will be hit in some k then y k to that y k plus 1 will contain that okay so it will be a surjective mapping okay St stretching after all 1 will be also hit there from some point so given any x some summation finitely many sum this summation though it is infinite sum given any x there will be finitely many coordinates a uh, theta is for which summation theta is equal to 1 you look at uh, maximum of these theta is at that point the point x comma 1 will be hit so that is why it is surjective since each fk is an embedding f is sur injective also therefore f is homeomorphic a proper injective okay surjective map that's why it is uh, and it's an embedding for each embedding means what open map or closed map you can use there this in open mapping okay to see open mapping you have to restrict take an open open uh, take a point take a neighborhood compact neighborhood okay inside that only finitely many compositions are there they are all open the composite is open so all this study so this means that f is homeomorphic okay yeah so that completes the proof that we have collar neighborhoods for the boundary of x the entire boundary of x whenever boundary of x is non empty of course okay here is a easy exercise show that a manifold with boundary is connected if and only if its interior is connected this is a slightly tricky thing you have to think about this interior is connected of course interior is connected but what about the points on the boundary why the whole thing is connected that's what you have to show okay but that will make you think what exactly should i use here all right so next time we will do some more properties of manifolds mostly we will now deal with only manifolds that is manifolds without boundary thank you